Most select committees have 11 members, and those 11 members reflect the party political balance in the House of Commons. So the chair is elected by MPs across Parliament, and then individual parties elect their own members of the committee by party. So I was elected by uh, all the other Labour MPs. Behind the scenes, the clerks do lots of um, preparation work for the committee. and They help them to scope the inquiry, to digest the evidence it's received. They help the committee prepare for the oral evidence sessions, and then they help them with the drafting of their report. Everything you said seems to argue that you put passengers first, but passenger focus, they say, quotes, a culture of looking after passengers when things go wrong is not yet second nature in the rail industry. Sometimes it's the news agenda can drive what select committees look at. Sometimes it's the legislative programme of that particular department. But select committees can sometimes pluck things out of the air where they might want to be much more proactive. That they look at an issue the government is not planning in legislating for, but perhaps they think that the government should be. First of all, can I thank you for not only giving myself, but giving my deceased mum the voice that she desperately needed. Um, Once a committee has decided on a topic, it will draft a list of questions. Those questions are then um, publicised widely in a call for evidence. The main way that um, um, committees announce their inquiries is by putting out a press release. Um, and very often the specialist press will, will pick it up. We do have a, a website, and I use Twitter and I use Facebook, so we have moved into the 21st century in terms of trying to get it out there to people. Some of the people who have written in and submitted written evidence will be invited to give oral evidence. There are usually half a dozen evidence sessions and they're asked questions by the committee based upon the evidence that they have submitted.